Hello, I am Tata Cat and welcome to my channel. Today we are playing the letter previously. Uh, we play as Miss Pink. And, uh, we were supposed to go and find Isabella at the house. But some weird stuff happened to us. And, like, the voices went out. Whoa, 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 whoa. And then, that's where we left off. Alright, let us continue. Until suddenly, it shatters. Well, what are we waiting for? Are we done here? Blonde bloke. His voice rips through the fog like a sharp blade. And my eyes snap open and I... Every time I load the game, I don't keep complaining about it, but it's very distracting. How did we get a minus on Ashton? We didn't even do anything. Basically, existing makes Ashton mad at us. Have we even had a choice as her yet? I don't remember making any decisions. Uh, I lost my train of thought. His voice rips through the fog like a sharp blade and my eyes snap open. When I look into them again, it's gone. When I look to them again, it's gone. You can head back to the car first if you want, Luke. I hope that settles everything, Rose. I don't know what Isabel's problem is, but please make sure she doesn't hurt herself. Oh. That would be something I would not want to hear if I went to pick up my friend. Anyway, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Likewise, ma'am. No shadows or dark clouds. Only amicable smiles and cordial handshakes. The usual pleasantries as Miss Cooper leads them out the mansion like a graceful host. None of the group seems to have noticed it. And even as I force my breathing to calm down, keep my eyes trained on their back, and wait for something to happen, it doesn't come back. She returns a moment later. Gently she closes the creek doors behind her, but there's a smile on her lips and an extra skip in her step when she walks back to me. Whatever she was discussing with the group had put her in a good mood. Even she appears to have an, uh, not observed anything odd. Was I just seeing things? <sighs> Glad that was over. It's been a long day. I thought for sure we were going to... Uh, hey, are you sure you're doing okay? You look a bit green. It, it's all good. I'm actually still recovering from a cold. Weather's been... Crazy lately. That must be it. Ah, yes. Because whenever I get a cold, I suddenly see shadows behind people and hear wah, 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 wah in their voices. Perfectly normal. The weather. This stupid cold and the friendly warnings I'm too stubborn to listen to. As much as I hate to admit it, Isabella's right. I was and still am feeling a little feverish when she visited me at school this morning. The medicine helped, of course, but only some. Although, it's not like I can function. I can't function. It did get better after lunch, and I was able to go through my schedule like at the usual. Now? Now, I'm not so sure. However, I can't keep acting like I've seen some sort of apparition when it's anything but. I simply must have listened to listened too many times to Isabella last week. My fever muddled mind has started to confuse things. If this doesn't let up, I just need another visit to my doctor. Plain and simple. Though, I do hope it won't get worse. 
We did promise to watch Zachary's film together. I know what you mean. I've been complaining to Isabel. It doesn't seem to affect her much, though. Must be because she grew up in the tropics. Anyway, shall we? She's probably hanging out with the rest of the catering staff. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised she's there. She's like, <laughs> lead the way. Oh, I skipped a line. My bad. What did it say? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if she's there. She eats like 10 hungry men when she isn't feeling well. With a small nod, she gestures for me to follow. I do so without much thought, finally putting everything in the back of my mind. Dot dot dot. Dot 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 is never good. Oh, apparently nothing happened after that. Journal. All the way to October 21st. Here it is. While waiting for, while waiting at the mansion, Rebecca overheard a brief conversation between the right couple, their interior designer and estate agent Rose Cooper. It was discovered afterwards that Isabella had already left a few hours ago. The entire visit took a whole 24 minutes, and my trip to the mansion, as it turns out, is as a use is a useless endeavor in itself. Isabella, no longer there, left shortly before I arrived, or at least that's what the few staff who saw her assumed. None of them knew where she went, but I can take a few guesses. There are only a number of places in Luxbourne she frequents, and well, she's never been the complex kind. It doesn't really take a genius to figure it out. She's... Still, it's odd she left on her own. She could have at least waited for Miss Cooper. It would have saved her having to pay the cab's fare twice today. And right after she was told to stay put! I mean, who does that? A lot of people. Also, didn't you? Oh, sod off! You don't own the road! In the end, all Miss Cooper could give me were a string of apologies for my trouble and a request to let her know when I find Isabella. The whole affair didn't even last long. I probably spent more time traveling back and forth. Soon enough, I'm weaving my way back to downtown Luxbourne. Worried sick, and on top of that, maybe a little annoyed. Whether it's an unexpected turn of events or at Isabella's herself, I'd rather not think about it now. Not when I'm already running late for Zachary's film. Besides, I'm perfectly sure that's where I'll find her. As one would expect, people are already gathered at the movie house when I get to it. The small avenue where it's located has been closed off early from any passing traffic to make way for the avid moviegoers who sure do crowd the venue. I have to park almost a street away and walk the remaining distance because of it. Looking for them has taken a while in a crowd this big, but I eventually spot them near the entrance. Thankfully, thanks to Zachary, mostly. And like I've surmised, Isabel's with them. I knew it! Wasting no time, I march over their little group. Words filled with concern tumble out of my mouth before I can stop myself. Isabella! Oh, thank goodness! Becca, you're just in time! An odd expression crosses her face. As I hold it with both hands, I ignore it in favor of getting a good look at her. 
forcing her to keep still and fix her gaze at me. Becca, you're squishing my face. Listen, squishing your face is important right now. It's the most important part of our diagnostic technique. How are you? Are you all right? Wh why wouldn't I be? You fell downstairs. There doesn't seem to be any visible injury, nor does she appear to be in pain. Apart from her confused frown at my questions, she looks pretty much like how she would any other day. Even so, you can't really tell those things with her at first glance. Last time she got sick, she never bothered to call anyone, even me, who lives right next door. If I hadn't checked on her then, she probably would have died on her bed with the rest of us none the wiser. It's one thing we laugh about now, but moments like those are also teaches you something about a person, if anything. It has given me more reason to constantly worry about her. And the moment a familiar name comes up, I know my concerns right now aren't completely baseless. Rose called me earlier. Her expression changes, and gently as she can, Isabella pushes my hands away, yet even before she says anything, I already have a hunch how this whole thing will play out. Oh no, no, everything's good. Rose covered for me at work today. That's not what I'm talking about. How's your head? Then and there, the whole conversation goes down as I've imagined. She dodges my hand when I reach for the back of her head, intending to check. She said, and blah blah blah, 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 intending to check the said injury myself, even makes it a show hiding behind Zachary just to avoid me. Instantly, what's supposed to be simple inquiry dissolves into a shameless game of tag. Shouting and chasing like none of us have been bothered to act like full-grown adults we're all supposed to be, including Ashton. I won't put it past Isabella, but Ash? Out of everyone? Well, from everyone else's perspective, when I see Ash, it makes sense. I don't know why Ash would be the exception. Ash seems pretty childish. As smart as he is. In fact, that stupid smile on his face tells me anything. He finds this whole mess amusing. Oh, for the love of- Isabella, this isn't a laughing matter! She did look pale when I saw her. Wow, thanks a lot, Ashton, you traitor. I'll get you back for this, just you wait. What? I'm just saying it as it is. If you mentioned this earlier, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. There's a moment's pause. My hand's still in mid-air as my attention shifts to Ashton and the words he leaves ringing between the four of us, hanging between the four of us. He doesn't meet my eyes. I don't think he's even aware of what he said. But the meaning in each syllable alone is clear. And they echo. They sting. They burn. I'm sorry. Saw her? Yeah, they arrived together. You better look fine to me then. I don't know. Of course. Of course. Why else would Isabella leave on her own after being told to stay put? After that little chat about money this morning? Something close to silence falls while I mull over their words, both what's already been said and what's left unspoken. Ooh, she's jealous. When I do find my voice, it only reeks with nothing but bitter, unpleasant thoughts. Thoughts I quickly stamp out before they surface. Thoughts I hide the best I can in the deepest parts of my mind, locking it away for no one to see. Oh, that's... That's good. At least she didn't have to travel alone, right? At least. Good. It sounds like you're trying to convince yourself. 
Yet, try as I might, my green-eyed monster easily rears its ugly head. Like it always does, every time his gaze lingers a second longer. Every time he smiles in a manner far too gentle, far too sincere, whenever he thinks no one can see. Every time my mind suggests his words mean more than they should. Every small little thing. Despite what he says, despite his tone. Look, you guys. For all I know, it may just be the same kind of fondness born from friendship. Maybe I'm simply overthinking like he often tells me, or maybe there really is something there. But in his short display of impatience, I know the whole of it is just for show. After all, growing up together with him didn't teach me nothing about him. For whose sake it is this time though? For him? For Zachary? For her? Or for me? That... That I can't tell. If she says she's okay, then there's nothing we can do about it. It's not like we can stop her either. Besides, she's still acting like the same old Isabella to me, if she can still run around like that. Why are you taking her side? Because it's reasonable. I'm not. But if she wants to watch Zack's movie with us, I'm not going to stop her. She's probably the one looking forward to it the most. Ash, that's... <sighs> you, of all people, should know... Tell you what, if I notice something amiss with her, I'll take her to the nearest hospital myself. Isn't it actually better this way she's around people? But whatever. Is that good enough for you? My mouth opens and snaps shut almost as quickly, forming a thin, hard light instead. I can't respond. Not because there's nothing to say. On the contrary, there's plenty. So many things I can use to reason and get him to agree. But because he speaks with much certainty, with much reassurance, she is so jealous. <laughs> does she really think nobody notices? I feel like Ashton probably does know that she likes him. He just doesn't acknowledge it. It feels like there isn't even a choice. All I can give is a long deep breath and a reluctant nod in the face of it. Before I can get a grip of myself, and my own weakness, the mood immediately shifts, and I'm being tackled into a hug. Thanks, Becca! It's always been you with him, isn't it? Did you say something? Me? Uh, nothing. Don't mind me. Just cursing your existence. No big deal. A lie, obviously. What else can it be? Each and every smile, a tiny effort to keep things as they are. Or so I tell myself. How do I know? This is merely a preamble. It starts out quietly and without fanfare, amidst friendly jives and harmless teasing, with a scrap of paper fluttering harmlessly to the ground. Ah, and so it begins. When it looks suspiciously like cheap Halloween like a cheap Halloween prank, no matter how you look at it. And yet, despite how ludicrous it all is, Isabella stubbornly insists, as if our whole life depends on acknowledging the truth in her story. Does she even realize how absurd she sounds now? Heavens, even my students wouldn't fall for this. Isabella, aren't you taking this a bit too far? Famous last words. She doesn't give me time to regret or think over my choice of words. From there, it escalates, goes into an argument too petty even for our standards as adults. Before we know it, one after another, her scathing words are being spoken. It's not a joke! Will you guys listen to me first? 
I saw something in the house earlier. It stood right in front of me. If I hadn't gotten away, that thing might have... Right. And in broad daylight, Isabella. Even someone gullible would find the logic in that screwed up. There's also no way in hell that this supernatural shit is true. But it's real! What do you think I saw? A hallucination? A delusion? Didn't you say you fell down some stairs? So maybe Rebecca's right. It happened after, when I was trying to get away. I almost got stuck in the same room with that thing. We're all in danger. I thought you were my friends. Why don't you believe me? Zack should believe her now. If he's alive still. But someone that has to be patient in all this. However much my own has already been frayed earlier, there's no one else. Who else here can deal with someone selfishly acting like a kid? Like every other time, it has to be me. We are, and you know that. But this thing and that thing has got nothing to do with the other. When Rose called earlier, I thought she's just exaggerating. But based on what I'm seeing right now, maybe it's better if we really postpone this for now. Don't bother. Just like that, she cuts us off. Slams the door right on our faces while my own temper flares before I can stop it. Although it falters briefly at the hard expression on her when she snatches the blasted paper from Ashton, I hold on to it. Regardless of how upset she appears, soured expression, and bald fists, during a tantrum is simply unacceptable. For a grown woman at that, words form at the tip of my tongue, ready. But before I can open my mouth and let all of it out, her feelings and mistakes be damned. Zachary raises a voice of his own. She's very much, I'm an adult. This is what adults do. We had to do this to be an adult. Blah, blah, blah. This is proper. Guys! A warning. Underneath the warm and hopeful beat in his voice, we all stop and look at him, and even my own anger subsides a little at his tone. Why don't we all calm down first? I'm sure Isabella has her reasons too. No need to be hard on her. And hey, ain't this supposed to be a happy get-together? I'm so sorry, Zach. I probably got you murdered by a ghost. To an outsider, it may sound like a desperate request, but Zachary has always been the one to keep a level head over petty squabbles. And this time is no different. He knows what to say, and when he lets it fall, they only ring sharp and true. We haven't seen each other for months. I'd really love to know what y'all have been up to. I only ever get to talk to Bella over chat. Please. And, as careful as he is with his own tone, it does make me feel ashamed. We're supposed to be here for him, to give what little support we can give. Yet here he is, trying to keep the three stubborn people from outright hashing it out in public. Later, we can't and will talk about it, of course. There's a proper time and a proper place for it. And at the moment, my anger and whatever it reprimands carries no longer matter. Besides me, Ashton appears to have already caught on. The lines of his shoulders ease to something much more relaxed. His expression back to its usual nonchalance. Isabella, however, she stands perfectly still, her hand clasping the straps of her bath 
like a lifeline. Eyes trained at some point near her shoes. There's no anger in her face. Only undeniable hurt. But she's never been good at hiding what she thinks. Always the open book. Always the one to wear her heart out on the open. And when she looks up, her answer is also as simple. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. Her lips are curled up in a smile, though lacking both its usual brightness and glee, it's a smile nonetheless. I've seen it countless of times. It's the very same one she would show when she knows has no other choice. When she knows she has no other choice. Or simply when things get tough for her. But despite everything I already know about her, it still catches me off guard. In all honesty, I expected her to run. To bulk out the first sign of losing this time. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be surprised. At 26, she is the youngest among the rest of us. Less experience, less accustomed to dealing with trivial quarrels like this. We really are big on adulting, aren't we, Miss Pink? Yet, here she is, holding herself and coping with it like how she would with matters concerning her family. Outside of that, to me, she has always been this childish, naive girl and watching the opposite play out right now. Somehow, I find it difficult to wrap my head around it. Re Rebecca's just as judgy as I thought she was. The, I am this perfect adult person. Look at how this person with emotions is doing things. They're not a perfect adult. Shame on them. But I'm perfect. Despite the fact that super jealous. All right, that's the Isabella I know. Oh, good. I thought for sure you were going to cry. <clears throat> he deserved that. But I envy her. What was that for? Stop calling me a crybaby! I'm not one! Aw, oh, don't cry. Stop it! I envy her spirit. Her warmth. Her cheer. The shine in her eyes when she looks at the world. How everything seems to simply fall back to a pleasant, lively rhythm of her around. How easily and tightly she fits into our lives, even without bonds only long years could forge. Like a lost piece of a puzzle, despite her jagged edges. How she draws people to her with ease. How Ashton, of all people, can be drawn to her. Okay, scaredy cat then. That too! If you repeat that, I swear I'll... <sighs> Let's just go. Oh, there it is again. I make no effort keeping the bitterness from my tone. I let it seep, linger stiffly in the air, as I avert my gaze from them. From their playful banter, their friendly teasing remarks, and Ashton's tender affectionate smiles, all before the stabbing aches in my heart change into something too painful to bear. It's all my head. Is what I often tell myself. Yet the way my heart rends at just the sight of them hurts. And like a coward, I walk away from all of it, taking with me a small hope that the movie will distract me away from those thoughts. Because like this, it's easy to find something to hate in her. Dusk has already given way tonight 
let me leave the film fest. Unfortunately, it does nothing to improve my mood, like I'm hoping. Neither does the muggy air that greets us upon stepping back into the noisy streets. Okay, well, we'll see how the first night after the letter goes for Rebecca in the next episode. I am Tina Cat. If you haven't already liked, comment, and subscribe. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.